creating and using a brain wallet. Whenever I think of brain wallet, I think of like a Dr. Frankenstein. It's alive. A brain wallet, as you're about to find out, is a lot simpler than that. However, it can be an incredible tool to recover some keys in the event our backups don't work or other systems fail. Let's begin. Our objectives in this nugget is simple. We're going to take a look at yet another option to store our private key information for Bitcoin, and that is to keep it in our brain. And I'll tell you what, for everybody, this may or may not be the best way to go exclusively. See, with a paper wallet, we have a printed copy that has the QR code for our private key, and we can use that whenever we need to. We go get the paper, and you're good to go. Well, with a brain wallet, the first thing I was thinking of is, well, holy cow, maybe we just memorize that entire long string, the private key. That's not likely for the average human. And a, and a brain wallet does not expect you to simply memorize the private key. With a brain wallet, you simply memorize a passphrase. And then we'll use a utility that puts that passphrase in and it cranks out the equivalent keys that we need to go ahead and use that wallet information. So with a brain wallet, we're going to have a, a kind of a passphrase or a password that specifically when used creates the private key. And then we can take that private key and put it into a system to go ahead and use it. So a brain wallet is simply another method of storing information for our keys, this time in our brain. Why use one? Well, let's say you don't want your private key to be digital anywhere. Same reason for a paper wallet. We don't want that digital key, whether it's being encrypted or anything else, we don't want it stored for security reasons in the digital world. So we remove it and we simply keep a passphrase in our head that when we use the passphrase, that generates the private key. And then we can go ahead and use that private key to sign and digitally send out the Bitcoin from our account. So how do we create one? It's going to take a tool. It's going to take some kind of a utility to create one. And so it's basically going to go like this. We're going to create a passphrase. And it really, this is so serious, it really needs to be a good one. Something like, let's say you have a, a cat walked through a brick wall. Or something like that. Cat walked through a brick wall. And you could even have poor grammar if you wanted to. Some phrase that you can remember. And this could become our string, or if you will, the passphrase for the actual brain wallet. And maybe we could swap out some characters. For example, maybe we could take all the E's like that and make those threes. There's only one E. <laughs> and maybe we could take our L's and we could swap those out with capital I's. So there's wall there. I mean, that's a capital I and some other tricks. I don't want to tell you exactly how to make your passphrases, but here's the key. You definitely want to be able to remember this. So it should be nothing that's well known from music or literature as far as a exact phrase that somebody could brute force attack, but simply maybe get a, an idea or a concept that you know you could remember and then some techniques to swap out a few characters. Remember the upper and lower case, maybe you make through capital T H R O U G H because it's going to be case sensitive as well. So whatever you want to do, you create this phrase that you know that you can remember. <laughs> See for me, I'll tell you what, I'm not using, I'm not using a, a brain wallet for me. Never. I'll tell you why I go on a really short vacation where I really enjoy myself, get totally immersed in whatever it is. I come back. I can barely log into anything because my brain has just been out of it for a few days. And I just don't remember all my passwords. That's, <laughs> that's how it works. So if you're going to use a brain wallet and you're going to keep a significant amount of value of Bitcoin associated with that, you'd want to make sure that you can remember the passphrase. So what I'd like to do is walk you through one example of creating a brain wallet. And there's different clients and there's different sites you can go to. And as the Bitcoin community expands, there's just going to be more and more and more services. But the concept is we create a phrase that we can repeat and that repeated phrase is generates the private key associated with our account so we can go ahead and move Bitcoin around at will. So we're going to use blockchain info. They've been so great. They have great, they just have a fantastic service and lots of bells and whistles, including a brain wallet. Let's go up to blockchain.info and let's create a brand new brain wallet. So we've logged in with this little test account that we've been using for a few of these nuggets. And before we get into the actual creation of the brain wallet, let me walk you through a couple of really important things like backing up inside of blockchain.info. So we're logged in over here under backup. You notice they put it on the front page. They want to make sure you very, are very aware of it. If we click on download, that downloads an encrypted copy 
inside of our browser. That's in my download folder. I happen to be running Chrome. But if I was running Internet Explorer or something else, um, whatever browser you're using, it would download a copy so you could go and restore it, which is fantastic. We also have Dropbox. Now, I currently am a Dropbox customer. And so if you click on Dropbox, it'll say, do I have permission? It'll ask you to authenticate. And if you look up here, it's saying successfully saved. So I have a folder in Dropbox where it's saving this encrypted content. And it is encrypted. It's super strong. So even if this is saved up in the cloud, not a big deal. People can't really open it and use it unless they have the password for my account as well to go ahead and get in. So that's one great method. So I'm going to go ahead and close that for a moment. We also have Google Drive. If you've got a Google Drive in the cloud and want to save it, that's fantastic. Or you can have them email it to you. With email, it'll email us the encrypted file so that we could restore it as well. So we don't want to be left hanging in case the entire blockchain website went out, went away. We can still go ahead and restore our keys on some other system or some other client because we have a personal backup of that information. So let's take a look and see exactly what we have going here. I've got several transactions and they've all been confirmed by the Bitcoin network, which is fantastic. Let's go to receive money and take a look at the addresses that we have. I've got this test for class. That was from our previous one with the paper wallet. This is my, my primary address that I got when I set this account. I also have two brain wallets. <laughs> if memorizing one wasn't enough, memorizing two is even tougher. But let's leave those. Let's create yet another brain wallet. So let's go ahead and create together a brand new brain wallet. And the way we'll do that is we're going to go over here to import export. It says warning, make sure you know what you're doing here. And so we'll put in our password. And with our password in, we'll continue. And if we want to create a brand new brain wallet, here's how we do it. Right under import, under brain wallet, we can put in our passphrase right here. Click on generate key, and that will generate a brand new brain wallet for us. This is one of many methods that we could use to create it. So let's do this. Let's call this uh, third brain wallet. Yes, sir. Bob. So third brain wallet, yes, siri, Bob. And we could swap it out a little more and we could change some characters around. For example, we could set the E to be a three. Or we could, and these as well. Now the thing is that we definitely want to remember <laughs> what this is because if we go all the way through with this and we delete digitally the private key and we're relying on our memory to pull this one out of the hopper and so it recreates the private key, we need to make sure we can recreate it. So in the interest only of me being able to type this in without a lot of difficulty, I'm going to change this to a, a not very secure passphrase to generate this for my brain wallet, just for demonstration purposes only. I'm going to say this is a brain wallet phrase, just like that which is not a really great idea for production and for your real Bitcoin. But for the demo, it's one that I can type in and remember fairly easily. Now with that in place, I'm going to click on generate key and it's going to automatically create a brand new address and a private key that I can recreate with that same passphrase. So now if we go back to receive money and we have this new one called brain wallet, <laughs> that's great. I've got two labels called brain wallet. Well, here's how we fix that. We take this one, which has zero Bitcoin in it. We go over to actions and we say, I want to change the label on that guy. And we'll simply call it test brain wallet. And that way we can see it visually based on the label. Fantastic. It's right there. And I'm also going to transfer a little bit of Bitcoin over there just so we have a little bit to play with. Let's do that by going to actions and saying, I want to see the QR code. And I'm going to scan that. I'm going to click on send payment. I'm going to send it 0 0.033 right now. It asked me to confirm and that money is on its way. Okay. So if we close this in just a moment, this should show up saying, hey, there's money on the way. So here we have our test brain wallet right here. It's got 0 0.033 Bitcoin in it. And again, this refresh option up here can refresh it just to make sure we see everything in real time. But it didn't take very long for it to show up. Now, is that Bitcoin available for us to send and send out? The answer is no, not quite yet. If we go to my transactions, it says, you know what? This hasn't been confirmed yet, but it will shortly. So at this point, we might be saying, well, Keith, I see that we have this test brain wallet. It has 0 0.033 Bitcoin in it. Fantastic. And that'll be confirmed here shortly. I've got this address. We wanted to send money to that address. But we also have this private key behind it. How exactly is that a brain wallet? Well, the answer is 
if for some reason we deleted this completely, let's say we didn't back it up, which by the way we should. Let's go to Wallet Home and we're gonna say, I wanna back this up to my Dropbox account, which it will. So now the encrypted copy of all that content, all of my addresses and their private keys, those are all backed up, fantastic. Because we just backed it up, the most deliberate way to get all of it back would simply be to do a restore. So the reality is this, let's say that our backups that we have in our Dropbox account, in the browser, the backups that are being automatically made by blockchain.info, the backup we emailed to ourselves. let's say all of that through some horrific event is completely gone. And five years later, <laughs> five years later, we come back to the network and say, okay, what can I do to get some of my Bitcoin back? The answer is we could regenerate the keys involved with this test brain wallet. And by doing so with that passphrase, the keys are going to be available to us. And once we have the keys, we can then transfer Bitcoin out of that account again. So the Bitcoin network knows exactly where everything is. It's just a matter of having the private keys to authorize the transmission or use of those coins. And for a demonstration, we could do one of a couple things. One, we could go ahead and simply delete the private key, simply like we did with the paper wallet, or we could delete the whole thing altogether. So as a reminder of how to do that, let's go ahead and take this test brain wallet. We'll go to actions and say, I wanna go ahead and archive this address. Go to archived addresses and simply say, I wanna go ahead for this test brain wallet. And also it wouldn't be a bad idea, by the way, to hit this resync button right here, just to make sure that everything is currently synchronized. So I'm gonna to go to the test brain wallet and say, I wanna delete the keys. Now, let me tell you about sweep keys too. If we wanted to move all the money that's associated with a given address, what we could do is we could say, I wanna sweep the keys and it would say, great, where do you wanna sweep them to? It's gonna basically pull all the value of all the Bitcoin you have in that account and move it to another address inside your wallet and it'll let you choose. So I'm not gonna complete it, but it's gonna say, where do you wanna send it? And I can send it to any one of these other addresses that I wanted to. So I'm gonna hit cancel. We have a 0 0.033 BTC on the line. It's not really a risk because it's backed up so let's go ahead and delete the keys. And now it's asking, do you want to delete just the private keys so you can watch that value in that account? Or do you want to go ahead and delete the address and the private key? And previously, what we did was we deleted the private key only for the paper wallet. And that's really the most protected element as well. So let's delete the private one here. And I have 10 seconds to change our mind. Woo. It's like 0 0.033 BTC on the line. And again, it's no big risk. We've got the backups, we've got the Dropbox, we could email it to ourselves, and any of those backup mechanisms in addition to the brain wallet could be used to restore that information. So now it says watch only. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the back to put it back as an active address. And here's our test brain wallet. And we can't send any money out of it because we don't have the da 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 da. We don't have the private key information. Let's go back and take a look at our transactions. And we haven't been confirmed yet, but we will. I know it's coming. So let's take a look at what we might do. If blockchain.info completely just went away, all of our backups magically somehow went away and we needed that private public key pair information again. We could go to a site like brainwallet.org and there are others and check it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna simply put in the passphrase that we used to actually create that brain wallet. So if we can remember the passphrase, we can regenerate from that the keys involved. So I think it was, this is a brain wallet phrase. And if that indeed is the correct phrase and capitalization matters, for example, if we change brain to capital B and take a look at the output, see how it's significantly, <laughs> it's significantly different. Every bit matters. So we'll put the phrase in exactly as we remembered it. And here is our private key right here. And there is our public key. So this is our address and this is the actual private key. Now we, if we peek back, now this one begins one NRB. If we go back and take a look at these addresses and receive money, you notice this is one NRB. It got it exactly right. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's some serious math involved, but not only do we know what the actual public address is, but we also know more importantly what the private key is, which is this guy right here. So I'm gonna take the private key. I'm gonna copy it and we'll go back to blockchain info, and I'm gonna say, I wanna import this. Now, how, you, how would you bring that private key back in? This also works for the paper wallet, by the way. Once you have the private key, 
whether it was obtained through a paper wallet that you had printed out or a brain wallet that was created based on a passphrase, you take that private key, you go to import export, and it's gonna want a password, which I will provide. And once here, we can say, I wanna import a private key. So from here, we could take this private key right here, and just copy it, make sure I still have it. Go back here, put it in, click on add, it says okay, great, it has all that information. Look at this, if we go back to receive money, you notice how the test brain wallet used to say watch only? Well, now it's got the private key. It's stored encrypted on the servers at blockchain.info, and it's now available to be used. So if everything went away, this is just one additional method that we could use to generate, regenerate, if you will, our private and public keys that we would need for managing our Bitcoin. The brain wallet is just yet another tool that we can use to safeguard our private key information and be able to regenerate it if we have nothing but our memory and some type of an interface or a client that can regenerate our keys based on the passphrase that we used when we created the brain wallet. In this nugget, we've taken a look at the idea of a brain wallet that can be used if every backup of our keys has been lost, every record of those keys either tangibly or digitally has been gone. If we have our brain wallet and that passphrase, we can actually recreate the keys required to continue to use the coins associated with those keys. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to create your very own brain wallet, just to get familiar with the concept and the idea of using it. So create the brain wallet, maybe delete the private key, go to a tool to recreate the keys based on your passphrase that you used when you created the brain wallet, just to verify and get a feel for how it works. I've had a lot of fun, I appreciate you joining me. I hope this information has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.